Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Beast Talk. Thank you to everyone who had subscribed to our channel and thank you to everyone who had liked our video. We really, really appreciate you. If you're yet to subscribe, please click on the subscribe button and let's get started. Today we'll be talking about a special topic, very interesting one, the Nigerian beer industry. And we'll be giving you a little bit of a little story about how this industry is going here and there. First off, I know a couple of you don't like beer, but who does not love the bubbly taste of an ice cold lager beer? I mean, who? <laughs> Some, some of you don't actually, but I do, I do I have my own brand. But today we'll be focusing on this market and we'll be telling you a little story. First off, the Nigerian beer industry is estimated to be around 300 billion naira. Amazing. 300 billion naira for that bottle. Whether it's a great or brand bottle, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> anyway, this industry has been growing at an average of 6% year on year in the last in the last decade and we see this growth really outstanding in fact in africa africa actually has the highest growth of beer at about five percent this is driven by south africa and africa and nigeria um, um more especially but africa really has an outstanding beer consumption growth which we see in the chat however what is more important to me is the per capita consumption of the nigerian beer industry as of today that number start, stands at about 15 liters per capita ladies and gentlemen what this means is that the total volume of beer consumed in nigeria if you divide and share it to every single nigerian 200 million nigerian every single person will have 15 liters of beer to drink for the year amazing right this number is really interesting but of course this number also is an indication of the opportunity in this market because the you know global average consumption per capita for beer sits at around 25 liters per annum and of course south africa sits about 60 liters per annum so you see this is the opportunity that these beer companies are seeing and that is why they keep coming to invest in the nigerian market because we have the population and we have the opportunity to grow per capita consumption of beer in nigeria keep nigerian brewery still leads the beer industry with about 55.5 percent market share they are followed by the international breweries. Ladies and gentlemen, this only changed last year, coming in at about 22.4% market share. Slight, slight, slightly above Guinness, coming in third at about 22.1%. It is important to note that these figures have changed over the years. Six years, seven years back, Nigerian breweries used to lead this market with about 71% market share and Guinness used to play around 15% market share and these same international breweries used to have 2% between 2 to 4% market share. What changed? What changed in international breweries? This is really important. This is the acquisition of the company by Abin Bev, the biggest brewer in the world, the biggest brewer in America. These guys came into the market and they have ensured that they gave these leaders a very big fight and so far we are seeing the result play out. So the big question is ladies and gentlemen is what happened to the Star Lager beer? What happened to Nigerian breweries? Why did they share this much? In fact the truth is this is a very sensitive question because looking at the fact that the Star Lager is a pioneer of this beer industry and the fact that they are Previous results in the you know in a decade ago was really really amazing and outstanding, but today they are struggling with the star lager beer. I asked a very important industry expert, and this is what he said. He said, "If you are if you have ever been in doubt of the unity of Nigeria, then look at the star beer because it tells you the entire story, ladies and gentlemen. The star lager beer used to be a symbol of Nigeria in itself, a symbol of Nigerian unity. Those days." when you know nigeria went to world cup and all that you see stars supporting the super eagles in fact they've been branded the bottle has been branded green white green to show solidarity with the nigerian nigerian system at the moment there is a trend in the beer industry that is destroying the very fabric that the star lager beer has built it was built on and this trend started with the coming of the sad miller this trend started with the introduction of the hero brand Saab Miller played a joker in this industry and they introduced the hero brand and associated it with the very reason of struggle, the very center of struggle in Nigeria, which is the Biafran story. So they tied this bear to the Biafran story and they played this card and it was a very significant joker in the Nigerian market. What happened is that the Easterners, who were major consumers of beer, especially Star and the other local premiums, started switching to Hero because it identified with their struggle. And this 
was trying to drive indigenization of the beer industry. And since 2012, this indigenization have even grown stronger. So now we're seeing players playing along ethnic lines. And this is where the Star Lager Bear is getting its definite blows. This is where they are giving it Muhammad Ali. <laughs> so you see, in all fairness, Nigerian breweries have also responded to this move. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how they responded to the, you know, Samila strategy, which Abin Bev have continued. Nigerian breweries, in their response, positioned the life brand, the life brand in the East to associate associated it with the Easterners' um, drive for progress, as they call it, or Ganiru, you know, the Eastern drive for progress. And so now you see in the East, what you're contending with is you're contending with the hero brand, which talks about the struggle of Biafra, and you're contending with the pride of the evil man, which is basically about progress and, and wealth. So you have the life beer, and then you have the hero beer competing in the East. Tell me, where does star? Where is star gonna sell? <laughs> now in the West, when you come to the West, the card was also played in the West with the trophy brand. So the trophy brand historically had been produced by by international breweries in uh, in the West, and so they positioned the trophy brand to represent the very thing that the Yoruba wants, the Yoruba people really, really, really want, and that is respect. The respect is an important value in the Yoruba culture, and that was how the, the trophy brand was positioned. And then the Yoruba people began to switch. They began to take the, just like what happened in the East. They so in response, in the West, the Nigerian breweries decided to position the Goldberg brand in the West. So you see, the Nigerian brewery industry has become a center of indigenization. Ethnicity is what is driving consumption. So local premiums, like Star and Golda, that really doesn't really associate with any tribal or ethnic group, are really suffering. And that is what we see in the Nigerian beer industry. I have to mention also that there has also been a leap in the Nigerian beer industry where you see people moving. So people who really don't care about ethnic group, well, these guys also consume beer. They don't really want to associate with any ethnic group. So they now leap to the premium segment of the beer industry, which has always been the core for Nigerian breweries, which is which they have controlled with the Heineken brand. In response, Habim, Habim Bev came into the market, did this, continued the Samila strategy, and then introduced their own premium beer, the biggest beer brand in the world. Of course, in America at least, the Budweiser brand actually love this brand a bit so of course the Budweiser came in and started differentiating in taste it wasn't that bitter I mean there were thoughts of whether it would survive in Nigeria and all that but of course they were competing premium and now they're doing a lot they're doing a lot as regards promotion and marketing of this brand and they are getting good results as we see in response just so Nigerian breweries doesn't take any chance I like these guys a lot so they know they have the Heineken brand that meets the profile, the taste profile of the average Nigerian consumer. Just so they don't lose people who probably want a lighter beer, Nigerian breweries launched the Tiger brand. <laughs> also a multinational brand that also is sold by Heineken. The Tiger brand came in to fill in the space of, you know, a mild beer, didn't, wasn't bitter, was also good in the taste, just to ensure that they remain competitive. And that is why Nigerian brewery is actually still sustaining growth despite the drop in numbers of the star brand. And this is the competition that we see in the beer industry. So thank you very much. Until we meet again next time, I remain the Niger Beast Duck and you're tuned on to Beast Talk.